the archives responded uh, by taking a bit more action uh, already. Uh, they have uh, taken the supervisor who was from a private uh, security company, uh, removed that supervisor uh, after an internal review from national archive from being at any national archives uh, facilities. So what they've done is they're they're doing a little blame shifting. At least they acknowledge the that our facts and the complaint are correct, which is a big win. We've got a preliminary injunction, another big win. We want to find out how this policy started. The security company that our, the National Archives Museum contracts with said they did their own investigation. I want that investigation. I want that material. I'm going to depose those investigators. So they've told us all this. We're going to depose the investigators that did this. We're going to find out if the National Archives sanctioned this because there was an interesting uh, dialogue at the gift shop at the National Archives. Now, now, I don't know if they were National Archives employees, federal employees, or contractors, don't know, but they said the same kinds of things. And it also happened at the Smithsonian. But in the archives, we've got an injunction. We're in mediation. So we're going to tell them in that mediation, here's what we want in mediation. We want the report from your security company. They did an investigative report. We want, it, we want that report. We want to know what investigative action was taken. We want to know who the, communicated this policy. We want to know why the National Archives gift shop personnel were saying the same thing interesting dynamic we're always very wary too when they try to lay the blame on one person a hundred percent so i'm not so don't think that like just, I, I like this move by the way i like the speed at which we're starting to see responses too from national archives uh maybe they're getting used to having to respond quickly because of all of those classified documents all those other things but you know uh but i just want to reiterate to people this is the tip of the iceberg. They start taking these actions. It actually raises more questions usually. Yeah, because somebody had to tell the somebody had to tell that supervisory security personnel what what the policy was. And remember, somebody at the gift shop said it too. Those are not the same companies. This is, by the way, just the beginning because sometimes we see in these situations blame being put on the on the folks who are the lowest on the totem pole. And here, I, I, nothing against security guards. And what I'm saying is they are privately. Uh, contracted out so it's easy for the archives to say see it was no one at the actual national archives right. who came up with the bad policy so that raises of course our our, our uh, suspicion we had clients that did not want to go on the pleadings because they thought it would affect their applications to college yeah i mean it's a sad state of the world uh in the country uh right now but we do have brave clients who did stand up and that they will then ensure that everyone's rights are protected, even those who are uh, quieter and less inclined to join lawsuits. Correct. Because it protects, when we win these, it protects everybody but and all speech. Everything we alleged, they have confirmed either through uh, their responses back to Congress, through the, through the consent decree uh, order in the, uh, uh, yep. in the National Archives situation. That supervisor will no longer be at National Archives.